By popular demand after this image went viral on the internet last week, today we're talking about anti-tank Nerf football grenades. It's Nerf or nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Fulda Gap. It is a series of lowlands between East and West Germany, and throughout the duration of the Cold War, it was thought to be the most likely site of a Soviet invasion. The reason for that being because it was one of the only geographic locations that would allow the Soviets to drive their tanks from their territory into West Germany. And if you don't know, this was especially concerning because the Soviets had a fuck ton of tanks. I mean, if the Soviets are world-renowned for anything, it's tanks, caloric deficits, and silver medals. Whether that be in the space race or the hockey Olympics just depends on the year. This is your time! What I'm trying to tell you is that America really, really wanted to be able to stop all the Soviet tanks in their tracks in the Fulda Gap before they could invade the rest of NATO. And because of this, America invented some of the most ridiculous weapons of all time, including but not limited to such timeless unhealthcare classics as the A-10 Warthog. The Davy Crockett, AKA the nuclear bazooka. Atomic Annie, AKA nuclear artillery. And yes, anti-tank Nerf football grenades. So here's what we know. This Grunts and Crafts project was an experiment in 1973. And it's exactly what it looks like. They basically took an anti-tank type mortar known as a Monroe charge, stuck it inside of a Nerf football. The idea being troops can throw it at tanks. The project, however, ended up failing because apparently you can't throw a spiral with a football when it's not hollow or at least made out of foam. But that isn't what's important here. What's important is the fact that simply looking at this thing, you can tell it's American. Like the only way that this picture gets more American is if that thing had gun rights and a side of bacon. I mean, first of all, it's a football. That's a dead giveaway right there. And it's also actually pretty genius because then only Americans are going to know how to throw it and kick it. And if any non-American ever touches it, I'm pretty sure they're legally obligated to bitch about how much football sucks and how much better soccer is for 15 minutes. Sorry, football. If I wanted to watch somebody not score all night, I'd put a mirror above my bed. Unpopular opinion, soccer is just a track meet with no lanes. But that's not the only reason that you can tell that this is violently American. You can also tell because it follows the unique design cues of how America develops weapons. And what I mean by that is typically speaking, when governments and militaries design weapons, they design a deadly weapon and then they teach their troops how to use it. America, on the other hand, has a tendency to do the exact opposite. And what I mean by that is Uncle Sam will look at America's youth and figure out what their unique skills are and then turn that into a weapon. For example, in the 1930s and 40s, the most popular game in America was baseball. So a lot of kids could throw a baseball pretty well. How do you weaponize that? That's simple. You make a baseball blow the fuck up. I present to you the Beano T-13 grenade. It is the exact dimensions and weight of a baseball. And while that particular particular variant of the grenade didn't pan out, you can tell where America's current frag grenade got its design cues from. So then in the late 60s and early 70s, when football was becoming extremely popular in America, they just took a foam football and made an even bigger grenade because America's youth was uniquely good at throwing that particular ball. <laughs> Buh, this is so dumb. You're trying to play it off like America's the only people that know how to throw something. Buh. I mean, I wouldn't limit it to just America. I would say probably all the countries in NATO are better on average at throwing stuff. I mean, have you ever seen a communist try to throw a grenade? Don't worry, I brought a video. Yeah, they literally have to train on what to do after they fuck up throwing a grenade. And I can give you plenty of different examples that aren't about throwing balls. For example, you throw a baseball and you throw a football, but you don't throw a basketball, you shoot a basketball. So when Uncle Sam makes an explosive basketball, obviously you're gonna shoot that too. Ladies and gentlemen, the rifleman's assault weapon, AKA the raw. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that the youth of America and America's allies today have a significant advantage over the rest of the world when it comes to playing video games. I mean, for example, China pretty much outlawed all video games in 2000, meaning that America and American allies have a distinct advantage at playing video games, which I'll admit seems fucking stupid till you realize that we have predator drones. In conclusion, the point I think I'm trying to get across here is while the anti-tank Nerf football grenade was a complete and utter failure, it is still a great example of the weird way that America develops weapons, as well as how utterly ridiculous the weapons during the Cold War got. If you made it this far down this weird abstract rabbit hole of a history lesson, thank you for watching. The best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out.